In this lecture, we are going to describe the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization process for obtaining an orthogonal set of vectors from a given set of linearly independent vectors. To be more precise, we will eventually describe the process for obtaining an orthogonal set of polynomials from a given set Q of linearly independent polynomials Q sub 0 to Q sub n. If from the set Q we obtain the orthogonal set P of polynomials P sub 0 of x to P sub n of x, we will write out the recursion relation for the elements of P. Let W be a general set of linearly independent vectors W sub 0 to W sub n. The set W being linearly independent implies that none of the vectors in W is the zero vector. As an exercise, one can show inductively that the zero vector will not be part of the orthogonal set that we obtained via the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization process. Suppose that V, whose elements are V sub 0 to V sub n, is the orthogonal set obtained from the set W using the Gram-Schmidt process. When we say that two vectors v sub i and v sub j are orthogonal, we mean that the inner product of v sub i and v sub j is zero. This is true whenever v sub i and v sub j are distinct vectors. In n-dimensional real space, the inner product between v sub i and v sub j is usually taken to be the dot product of v sub i and v sub j. If indeed we are to obtain the set V from the set W using the Gram-Schmidt process, then we can start by setting the first element V sub 0 of V equal to the first element W sub 0 of W. We can then define the next element V sub 1 as W sub 1, which is the second element of W, but we have to subtract the component or projection of W sub 1 along V sub 0. This component or projection is given by V sub 0 times the inner product of W sub 1 and V sub 0 divided by the inner product of V sub 0 with itself. We can easily verify that V sub 0 and V sub 1 are orthogonal by taking the inner product of V sub 0 with V sub 1. The first term on the right side gives us the inner product of V sub 0 and W sub 1. And from the term that we are subtracting, we get a factor which is the inner product of V sub 0 with itself. The inner product of V sub 0 with itself cancels out. So we're left with the inner product of V sub 0 and W sub 1 minus itself. So the inner product of V sub 0 and V sub 1 is 0, so that V sub 0 and V sub 1 are orthogonal. We set the next element v sub 2 of v equal to w sub 2 minus the projection of w sub 2 onto the vector subspace spanned by v sub 0 and v sub 1. And so we subtract v sub 0 times the inner product of w sub 2 and v sub 0 divided by the inner product of v sub 0 with itself. We also subtract v sub 1 times the inner product of w sub 2 and v sub 1 divided by the inner product of v sub 1 with itself. We can easily show that V sub 2 is orthogonal to both V sub 0 and V sub 1. We'll show it for V sub 0 and leave showing the orthogonality between V sub 1 and V sub 2 as an exercise for the viewer. We take the inner product of V sub 0 with V sub 2. The first term on the right side gives the inner product of V sub 0 and W sub 2. The second term produces a factor which is the inner product of V sub 0 with itself. The third term produces a factor which is the inner product of V sub 0 with V sub 1. And since V sub 0 and V sub 1 are orthogonal as we had just seen, the entire third term is 0. In the second term, the inner product of V sub 0 with itself cancels out so that all that's left on the right side is the inner product of V sub 0 with W sub 2 which cancels out with itself. And so the inner product of V sub 0 and V sub 2 is 0 so that V sub 0 and V sub 2 are orthogonal. 
The general formula for V sub k for k equals 0 to n is W sub k minus the sum from i equals 0 to k minus 1 of V sub i times the inner product of W sub k and V sub i divided by the inner product of V sub i with itself. One can show inductively that the set V is an orthogonal set. We leave this as an exercise for the viewer. In order for us to be able to apply the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization process to polynomials and to functions in general, we have to provide a definition for an inner product between functions. Let f and g be functions defined on the closed interval from x equals a to x equals b. Assuming that f and g are Riemann integrable functions on the interval from x equals a to x equals b, a frequently used definition for an inner product between f and g is the integral from a to b of the product between f of x, g of x, and a weight function w of x. One can say that this is a weighted inner product between f and g. The function w here is usually specified and is positive on the interval from a to b. We will use this definition of the inner product between functions for the Gram-Schmidt orthogonalization process as applied to polynomials. The first polynomial element p sub 0 of x of the orthogonal set p is the first element of q. So p sub 0 of x is q sub 0 of x. The second element, p sub 1 of x, is q sub 1 of x minus the projection of q sub 1 of x onto p sub 0 of x. And so p sub 1 of x is q sub 1 of x minus p sub 0 of x times the inner product of q sub 1 and p sub 0 divided by the inner product of p sub 0 with itself. This is equal to q sub 1 of x minus p sub 0 of x times the fraction whose numerator is the integral from a to b of the product of q sub 1 of x, p sub 0 of x, and w of x. This numerator, of course, is the inner product of q sub 1 and p sub 0. The denominator is the integral from a to b of the square of p sub 0 of x times w of x. This denominator is the inner product of p sub 0 with itself. We can set p sub 2 of x equal to q sub 2 of x minus p sub 0 of x times the fraction whose numerator is the integral from a to b of the product of q sub 2 of x, p sub 0 of x, and w of x. The denominator is the integral from a to b of the square of p sub 0 of x times w of x. We also have to subtract p sub 1 of x times the fraction whose numerator is the integral from a to b of the product of q sub 2 of x, p sub 1 of x, and w of x. The denominator of this fraction is the integral from a to b of the square of p sub 1 of x times w of x. To generalize, the recursion for p sub k of x for k equals 0 to n is given by q sub k of x minus the sum from i equals 0 to k minus 1 of p sub i of x times the fraction whose numerator is the integral from a to b of the product of q sub k of x, p sub i of x, and w of x. The denominator is the integral from a to b of the square of p sub i of x times w of x.